Story four of Reginald in Russia and other sketches by Saki. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Noel Badrian. The sex that doesn't shop. The opening of a large new centre for West End shopping, particularly feminine shopping, suggests the reflection do women ever really shop of course it is a well attested fact that they go forth shopping as assiduously as a bee goes flower visiting but do they shop in the practical sense of the word granted the money time and energy a resolute course of shopping transactions would naturally result in having one's ordinary domestic needs unfailingly supplied whereas it is notorious that women servants and housewives of all classes make it almost a point of honour not to be supplied with everyday necessities we shall be out of starch by thursday they say with fatalistic foreboding and by thursday they are out of starch they have predicted almost to a minute the moment when their supply would give out and if thursday happens to be early closing day their triumph is complete a shop where starch is stored for retail purposes possibly stands at their very door but the feminine mind has rejected such an obvious source for replenishing a dwindling stock we don't deal there places it at once beyond the pale of human resort and it is noteworthy that just as a sheep worrying dog seldom molests the flocks in his near neighbourhood so a woman rarely deals with shops in her immediate vicinity the more remote the source of supply the more fixed seems to be the resolve to run short of the commodity the ark had probably not quitted its last moorings five minutes before some feminine voice gloatingly recorded a shortage of bird seed a few days ago two lady acquaintances of mine were confessing to some mental uneasiness because a friend had called just before lunchtime, and they had been unable to ask her to stop and share their meal, as, with a touch of legitimate pride, there was nothing in the house. I pointed out that they lived in a street that bristled with provision shops, and that it would have been easy to mobilise a very passable luncheon in less than five minutes. That, they said, with quiet dignity, would not have occurred to us and i felt i had suggested something bordering on the indecent but it is in catering for her literary wants that a woman's shopping capacity breaks down almost completely if you have perchance produced a book which has met with some little measure of success you are certain to get a letter from some lady whom you scarcely know to bow to asking you how it can be got she knows the name of the book its author and who published it but how to get into actual contact with it is still an unsolved problem to her you write back pointing out that to have recourse to an ironmonger or a corn dealer will only entail delay and disappointment and suggest an application to a bookseller as the most hopeful thing you can think of in a day or two she writes again it is all right i have borrowed it from your aunt here of course we have an example of the beyond shopper one who has learned the better way but the helplessness exists even when such bypaths of relief are closed a lady who lives in the west end was expressing to me the other day her interest in west highland terriers and her desire to know more about the breed so when a few days later i came across an exhaustive article on that subject in the current number of one of our best-known outdoor life weeklies i mentioned the circumstance in a letter giving the date of that number i cannot get the paper was her telephoned response and she couldn't she lived in a city where newsagents are numbered i suppose by the thousands and she must have passed dozens of such shops in her daily shopping excursions but as far as she was concerned that article on west highland terriers might as well have been written in a missal stored away in some buddhist monastery in eastern tibet the brutal directness of the masculine shopper arouses a certain combat of derision in the feminine onlooker a cat that spreads one shrew mouse over the greater part of a long summer afternoon and then possibly loses him 
doubtless feels the same contempt for the terrier who compresses his rat into ten seconds of the strenuous life i was finishing off a short list of purchases a few afternoons ago when i was discovered by a lady of my acquaintance whom swerving aside from the lead given us by her godparents thirty years ago we will call agatha you're surely not buying blotting paper here she exclaimed in an agitated whisper and she seemed so genuinely concerned that i stayed my hand let me take you to winks and pinks she said as soon as we were out of the building they've got such lovely shades of blotting paper pearl and heliotrope and momy and crushed but i want ordinary white blotting paper i said never mind they know me at winks and pinks she replied inconsequently agatha apparently has an idea that blotting paper is only sold in small quantities to persons of known reputation who may be trusted not to put it into dangerous or improper uses after walking some two hundred yards she began to feel that her tea was of more immediate importance than my blotting paper what do you want blotting paper for she asked suddenly i explained patiently i use it to dry up the ink of wet manuscript without smudging the writing probably a chinese invention of the second century before christ but i'm not sure the only other use for it that i can think of is to roll it into a ball for a kitten to play with but you haven't got a kitten said agatha with a feminine desire for stating the entire truth on most occasions a stray one might come in at any moment i replied anyway i didn't get the blotting paper end of the sex that doesn't shop